Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me for today's edition of The Daily Office. In case we don't know each other, my name is Kenny, and I am a pastor at the Village Church of Lincolnshire in Lake Forest, Illinois. Now, today I want to talk to you about God's grace and the sufficiency of God's grace. You know, I've been thinking that lately, uh, God is so good to answer our prayers, and He hears all our prayers. But at the same time, there are prayers that we are praying that seem as though they have gone unanswered, or at least they haven't been answered in the way that we would like them to. So today I just want to briefly read from 2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 through 10, to talk about a prayer that Paul had that went unanswered and what that meant. So this, again, is 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. I must go on boasting. Though there is nothing to be gained by it, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weakness. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool. For I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So what Paul is saying here is that he's been the beneficiary of God's revealing grace, that God has shown him things that, that the eye has not seen nor heart has imagined, that God has opened up the window into heaven and allowed Paul to peek inside. But there's a danger in that, because Paul could very easily get conceited. He could say, I'm the one. I'm the one who's seen these wonderful things from God. Everyone look at me and how special I am. So what happened? Paul says he received a thorn in the flesh, a, a trial, a physical trial to humble him so that he wouldn't think more of himself than he truly is. And what does God say in the midst of that? He says that he has given this trial basically as a gift because God's grace will be sufficient in that gift, and his power will be made manifest in Paul's weakness. A lot of us are struggling with unanswered prayers. Maybe it's the healing of someone you love. Maybe it's your own healing. Maybe it's a job situation that's gone sideways. Maybe it's broken relationships. Maybe it's a home dynamic that is just terrible, and you're basically stuck in it right now. I talked to someone last night who is struggling mightily right now through an ugly family situation. And sometimes in those situations, we've been praying and praying and praying and praying, and God hasn't shown up, at least not in the way we would want him to. It seems he hasn't answered our prayers. But I just want to encourage us today from the Bible, from Paul's experience, that God's apparent silence is not his absence. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. And even this, 
even this trial, even this thorn in your flesh, he means for your good. Think about what Paul said. He did it to keep me from becoming conceited. It's as if Paul says, imagine who I would have been otherwise. Imagine if I didn't have this thing in my life, this thing that requires me to reach out to God and to fall on my knees and ask for his grace. Imagine who I would be. Selfish, conceited, proud, boastful in the wrong things. So friends, if you're struggling, if you're suffering, my hard counterintuitive word is this. Count it joy because God's grace is sufficient. It is always sufficient. It will always be sufficient. His power will be made manifest and perfect in, in your weakness. He will meet you. I don't know if it's today. I don't know if it's next week, next month, next year. It may not be 10 years. And that's hard. And I know how hard that is. And I don't want to be glib and I don't want to downplay anyone's suffering. But if you are in Christ, then Christ is in you. And the Holy Spirit is with you. And he is continually forming you into the image of our suffering servant and our merciful high priest. So I'm going to move to, pray, to prayer now. But my prayer for you now and, and always would be that God's grace would be sufficient for you. That he would meet you in your suffering. He would meet you in that place of unanswered prayer. Okay. As I'm praying, I would encourage you to offer any prayer requests you might have in the comments, and I will pray for those as we get to them. Okay. Father, it is a beautiful thing that your grace is indeed sufficient for us. Lord, in Christ we have seen your grace on display your goodness, your truth, your mercy. We thank you that in him you have moved towards us and you have bound yourself to us and you have promised to never let us go. Lord, I thank you that that is true even in the silence, even when we're, you're not doing what we would hope you to do. So I pray for all my friends today who may be struggling with unanswered prayer who may be waiting for you to show up. Lord, I pray for them that you would give them grace to endure, to persevere. I pray that someday they would be able to look back at this moment and they would very clearly be able to recount your goodness to them. That they would be able to say, yeah, I had this season in my life, but God was with me in it. And he used it to make me look more like Jesus. To make me love him more. To make me be more compassionate towards others. To make me more merciful. He has comforted me in order to comfort others. I pray that my friends who struggle, I pray that my friends who are waiting on you, would wait with that hope, knowing that you are with them and you are for them. Lord, as we consider the, the issues of today, there is so much we could be praying for right now. We scarcely know where to begin. Lord, of course, I pray for this, that you would stop the spread of the disease. We have all made great sacrifices, and they have taken a heavy toll on us as individuals, as families, as churches and communities and, and society as a whole. Lord, we pray that you would um, honor those sacrifices, that you would stop the spread of this disease, and you would enable us to move back toward life and community. Maybe not life as it was before, but life as it could be, out of distancing and isolation. Father, for the leaders in our country at every level who are weighing the... Um, all the, the, the advantages and disadvantages of continued isolation versus selective and careful reopening. Lord, give them great wisdom. Give us patience. Give us grace. Help us to trust that we don't know all. And I pray that those people would listen not to the angry voices of their constituents, 
but they would listen to the experts and that they would follow wisdom, that they would follow research, and Lord, they would make the best decisions they possibly can, empowered by your grace. Lord, I pray for the people who aren't so convinced that this danger is indeed a danger. Lord, we've seen people gathering, we've seen people defying the the social distancing guidelines, we've seen people protesting in mass, people who perhaps think this is a hoax, or people who aren't, you know, who just, for whatever reason, they aren't convinced. I pray for them, Lord. For the ones who are suffering, I pray for them. I pray that you would provide. I pray that we wouldn't be quick to downplay their suffering, that we wouldn't be glib, that we wouldn't be short. But I do pray you would help us to be persuasive. And Lord, for those who are contrarian, for those who just don't want to uh, abide anyone telling them what to do, or to give up their individualism for the sake of the community, Lord, I pray you'd change their hearts. I pray you'd soften them. I pray that you'd expose them to your wisdom. Lord, as we look um, within our own faith communities, we pray for the leaders. Pray for the pastors. Lord, none of us really knows what we're doing right now. We're just kind of figuring it out as we go. And we trust that you are giving us the grace and the wisdom we need. We trust that your grace is sufficient for us in this time. Lord, I think specifically of a pastor friend of mine, Bo, who is uh, suffering with sickness. I pray for him, Lord, that you bring healing. And I pray that you protect his family, that, Lord, you would bring a swift resolution to whatever this is, and that your hand of healing would be upon them. Lord, I pray for the many churches around us who are beginning to see needs. Lord, I pray that you would help those churches in our church to see these needs, receive these needs, and respond swiftly. Lord, you have placed us here for a reason. We are to be a, a light to the world, a city set on a hill. So we pray that you'd help us do that. We'd help your church to be your church and to bring mercy and comfort to a wounded and hurting world. So Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time we've been able to pray together. We ask that you would bless it and that you would hear our prayers. But Lord, for even those times when we know you hear our prayers, but it seems like you're not responding, you're not answering them. Pray that you would remind us by your grace and by your spirit that you are with us, that your grace is sufficient for us. And even when we are weak, you are strong. And it's in and through our weakness that you will make the world to see that you are strong. We thank you for Jesus, that in the folly and weakness of the cross, he showed the entire world what your love and your power and your strength looks like. May we fix our eyes upon him today in all our days. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me uh, in today's daily office. We'll be back on Monday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, this Sunday, we will be gathering online for worship as we normally do in this digital environment. Later on today, I'm going to be posting on our Facebook page and our website a liturgy for home worship. It'll include songs, readings, prayers, uh, and a video sermon to help you worship at home. So if you're interested in that, I'd encourage you to come back, look at our Facebook page later. If you don't like it yet, like it now, and we will look forward to seeing you again. God bless you all.